Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all the love and comments and emails and, and everything coming from the YouTube channel. I'm super happy to be sharing all my experiences and knowledge and information with you. This channel, again, is dedicated to you and my whole idea of the channel is to educate you on narcissistic abuse and what you can do to spot it, look for it, help yourself, protect yourself, and if need be, get out of your relationship, uh, at the very least, to understand the terms and what may be happening to you. So remember, I'm a six-year narcissistic abuse survivor, and I have gone through this. Uh, I've gone through it, and I want to share my insight with you guys. So today's topic is going to be what is the best, or one of the best ways to rebuild your life after narcissistic abuse, after a narcissistic abusive relationship. The first one is what I always try to explain to you guys on this channel, which is knowledge is power. The more you educate yourselves and the more you understand what you went through and look for the signs and, and try and figure out exactly what happened, basically putting the pieces of the puzzle together and understanding that in fact you did suffer narcissistic abuse or uh, to some level and educating yourself because one of the main problems with, with narcissistic abuse is that again it, it happens behind closed doors and when it does you feel isolated and when you're isolated you really don't have anyone to turn to to talk to and to bounce things off of to, and and to get them to understand where you're coming from um, it, you need to educate yourself and by this I mean YouTube videos Google um, you can DM me, you can uh, email me, but search and look, look for, for situations. As a matter of fact, recently I had I, some conversations with people on DM about they were asking me if this fit into narcissistic abuse. And keep in mind, I'm no doctor. However, I have six year, a six-year PhD in narcissistic abuse uh, survivalism. And um, yeah, I, I had to say that I thought that there were some signs there. So education is key and an awareness and understanding of the problem goes a long way in combating the abuse of the long-term lasting effects what what that means again is if you really dig in deep and I'm sure you are because you're here on my channel and you're honest with yourself and you recognize that you you were or you are in a narcissistic abusive relationship then that's the first step it's a massive step it's huge the light bulb goes off in your head and in your you're now on your on your path to recovery and to identifying exactly what's happening um, you're gonna come to understand how you reacted to the abuse and or did or didn't and, and why and what you did and you're gonna find out that most of the times what you did was to appease the narcissist and to make sure that things went smooth in the household or in, in, in your setting and um, to the detriment of yourself, meaning when you did what you did, you were trying to make things smooth so there were no more arguments or, or uh, you know, outbursts of rage and things. But the education is the key to you understanding exactly the situation you were in or are in. And education is the way it's gonna, you're gonna get out of the situation or at least minimize the damage that's being done to you. The second one is gonna, the second point will be know your worth. Knowing your worth makes you less willing to compromise on things that matter. And what that means is, listen, before you met the narcissist, you were a certain person and you were confident, I'm sure, and secure and comfortable and doing well and contributing to society and everything. And then, of course, you met the narcissist and things changed unbeknownst to you. You had no idea what was going on and you were, you were basically sabotaged slowly 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 and the next thing you know you you lost yourself of worth I'm sure you did I'm sure you, you you're like your head was spinning like I would normally not be doing this I don't understand what's happening why is it always me why do I feel all this pressure can I ever make the narcissist happy uh, all things like this and then your self-worth it, it it gets whittled away and what you do is you you, you start changing your behavior you, you, as a person, ultimately change to appease the narcissist. And your self-worth is at, at a very minimal level. And that's not how any human being should be. We're all human beings, we're, no matter where we're from or, or what we look like or anything. 
We should all be helping each other and we should all feel good about each other, or I mean, about ourselves. We should not look to one, look to another to validate ourselves and to see how we, how we should be, um, how our self-worth should be. Next one, next one's gonna be boundaries. And when you rely on your boundaries to make clear lines of who you truly are and what you want, you make it easier for those around you to understand what is expected of them. There's a very high likelihood that you lost your boundaries in your narcissistic abusive relationship. By this, I mean, before you met the narcissist, I'm sure that you had boundaries. Like, uh, I, you know, I, for example, you know, I, I won't uh, stay awake past 10 o'clock at night, or um, I won't, uh, you know, I, I won't watch certain kinds of movies or things like that. Just boundaries, and they can be much bigger boundaries. Excuse me, those are just basic boundaries, but they could be much bigger ones. That all changed because your boundaries got eroded away when you met the narcissist because the narcissist, as you know, they have their boundaries and you need to fit into those, but you cannot have your own. It's a one-way street with them. Uh, boundaries are important for each and every one of us, meaning like maybe uh, another example is like, okay, I don't receive texts after seven o'clock at night. Why? Because I have family time, and, and it's my time, and I need to do things. But maybe with the narcissist, you know, uh, the, that was out the window because you needed to be there for them. These are just small examples, but boundaries, we all need them, and we all need to enforce our boundaries because we're all different. Each and every one of us is different, and we, we know what we need to be a uh, productive person and to feel good about ourselves. And boundaries is a huge, are a huge part of this. Uh, you can't always, uh, you need boundaries. If you don't have them, you're gonna find yourself giving, giving, and giving, and then your tank is gonna be empty or your glass is gonna be less than half full, and you're not gonna have anything of yourself. You're just gonna be a giver, and, and you, you can't go on like that. Boundaries are important in every aspect of your life, business, family, personal, you need boundaries. And then support networks. to get. Back to the person you once were, you need a support network. Family and friends often see us as the best light when we all can see the bad stuff and see the strengths that we are unable to accept in the midst of all of our trauma. Look at the strengths and revel in them. This means that uh, on your road to narcissistic abuse recovery, I can't emphasize this one enough, support networks are huge. You, when you are going through this, you need to have some clarity and you need to, to talk to your family or friends that you trust, that specifically family, I would say. But the, the, the people you, you rely on, you communicate with, they need to be people you trust, implicably. And if you don't, I, I, you just watch what you tell them. But the point being, you need support because again, you, I'm certain you're isolated, you're feeling alone, you're confused, you are uncertain of yourself, your self-worth is low, definitely have no boundaries. And when you talk to family, trusted family members or friends, you can at least get a different perspective on what has happened and, and why you um, feel the way you do. Now keep in mind, most of your family or friends may not know what you're going through and they may have to educate themselves also to, in order to give you feedback. But the point being, if you reach out and talk to people, I'm talking like get on the phone, talk to them, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, whatever means you can, or if, you're, if, it's, if it's in person, it's even better. But you need to let your feelings and thoughts out to get a different perspective on what you've gone through and what you're going through. When this happens, a bunch of things will take place. One, you're gonna feel better because you, you've let some of this out. But more importantly, you're gonna share important, vital, vitally important information with someone you love or respect and then they can help you. And believe me, they will help you, otherwise you wouldn't have talked to them. Times like this are so important to, to talk to people. And I, I can't emphasize this enough. We, we need to have other people close in our lives that we can tell really important and, and secure things with. This is one of those times. So reaching out to family members and letting them know what you think is going on or how you're, being, how you're feeling, Maybe they do know a little bit about narcissistic abuse. That would be great if they did. But either way, they can help you research and figure out and then come to conclusions yourselves. 
Also, therapy, if you can get a therapist soon, there, soon after or when, you're, when you've discovered that you're in a narcissistic abusive relationship, this will go a long way. The, the therapist must specialize in narcissism, sorry, narcissistic abuse, however, otherwise they may not know exactly what they're talking about. But these are the best ways to rebuild your life after a narcissistic abusive relationship. Um, I went through each and every one of these and I'm still going through them, to be fair with you. You need to become yourself again, which means a complete person, a confident person, and a person that knows their worth. Setting boundaries is one of the ways to do that. All the knowledge you're gaining from my channel is another way to do that. Support networks means family and friends and talking with close ones, close people in your lives to let them know what's going on and, and to educate them so they can help you. Uh, all these things add up and what, what you're going to find out is there's going to be a time when, you, believe me, I know you're not feeling well now. I understand I've, I've been there. But w the more you work you do on yourself and the more introspection you do and the more you understand what is going on with you and how you're being uh, treated, the better off you will be. Now, all this, all this means is that you need to educate yourself and be honest. Don't make excuses up for the narcissist. Don't say, oh, well, they just had a bad day. No, none of that. You, you, this is the time for you. This is the time where you need to take care of you. And the reason why is because the narcissist clearly has not been taking care of you. This is your time. You found my channel for a reason. You need to utilize all the information I'm giving you. Be strong, get help and help yourself out, the sooner the better. You are not alone, just like <clears throat> the motto of the channel, you are not alone. As long as I'm here on the channel and I'm producing videos every day, I'm here to support you and to educate people on narcissistic abuse. Remember, we are all in this together, but when, when you first understand what's going on to you, there's a very high likelihood you're gonna, you're gonna be isolated, you're gonna be in your house behind closed doors, <clears throat> excuse me, not understanding what's going on. So I'm hoping this video is an eye opener for you to enlighten you and to educate you on what exactly, exactly is happening. When you first discover this, you, you may have to sit down and think for a few minutes. That's what I did. I was in shock that this even existed, but it does. So I just want to let you know, I've gone through this. I'm still dealing with things. I'm a fighter and a thriver and a survivor just like you are. So drop me a DM, listen, like, subscribe, share the video, do all the good stuff. Like I always say, you're not alone. I am here for you. I'm going to drop another video later today. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on YouTube. I've got a little Twitter following and um, I'm always here, you guys. So whatever you need, let me know. I love you all. You're not alone. And I hope this has been helpful for you. God bless you.